In this video, let's understand with an example what happens when fallback is set to blocking. Before I dive into the points, let me tell you that fallback blocking is very similar to fallback set to true. The only difference is that instead of showing a fallback page, you'll not see any new content in the UI while the page is being generated on the server. But to ensure we understand it correctly, let me walk you through the different points how fallback set to blocking affects pre-rendering. The first point remains the same as fallback set to false or true. The paths returned from get static paths will be rendered to HTML at build time by get static props. However, the second point differs. The paths that have not been generated at build time will not result in a 404 page. Instead, on the first request, Next.js will render the page on the server and return the generated HTML. When that's done, the browser receives the HTML for the generated path. From the user's perspective, it will transition from the browser is requesting the page to the full page is loaded. There is no flash of loading or fallback state. At the same time, Next.js keeps track of the new list of pre-rendered pages. Subsequent requests to the same path will serve the generated page just like other pages pre-rendered at build time. Let's understand all these points with regards to our application. First, let's make the code changes. Back in VS Code in postid.js, we're going to set fallback to the string blocking. Also, we're going to get rid of the router fallback code. So remove the import statement, the use router hook, and also the fallback UI. Also delete the previously built folder to be on the safer side and rebuild the application. So yarn build. When the build completes, if you take a look at server, pages, posts, pages for post ID 1, 2 and 3 are statically generated as they are returned from get static paths. Next, let's start the application. So in the terminal, run the command yarn start. In the browser, what I want you to observe is sort of the load time for each of the pages that we are going to visit. We are already on slash post slash one. So let's load slash post slash two. When I load the page, the time taken is six milliseconds. If I navigate to slash three, the time taken is eight milliseconds. So pretty fast as the pages are already pre-rendered. However, if I navigate to slash post slash four, you can see the time taken is 600 milliseconds, which is considerably higher compared to the previous loads. So what is happening here is when you make the initial request to slash four, Next.js will start to render the page on the server for post ID equal to four. During this time, the tab shows a loading spinner indicating that a request is being made. After the page has completed rendering on the server, the browser receives it. And because of the blocking behavior, the first request itself has the content returned. There is no flash or loading state between the request and the page load, just a small delay. Also, you can see here in the terminal, get static props is called. So we see the log statement generating page for slash post slash four and the page for post ID equal to four is also generated in the build folder. 
So pretty much the same as the previous video, but instead of rendering a fallback page, the UI is blocked till the new page is received in the browser. Now then, when would you use fallback set to blocking? On a user experience level, sometimes people prefer the page to be loaded without a loading indicator if the wait time is a few milliseconds. This helps avoid the layout shift that some users are not a fan of. But the technical reason blocking was introduced is because some crawlers did not support JavaScript. The loading page would be rendered and then the full page would be loaded which was causing a problem. The next year's team recommends fallback set to true unless you see a problem with it in which case you can use fallback set to blocking. Alright, I hope you now have a thorough understanding of the fallback key in get static paths. And I hope as well that you now have a much better idea about pre-rendering and static generation in Next.js. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.